Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nutanix Director of OEM Sales, Jason Langoni, and welcome back, Raja Mukhopadhyay. Wow, uh, fascinating talks on innovation, design, and disruption. You know, Jason, I was thinking, just reflecting, one of the ways Nutanix has disrupted the market is by innovating around our API-first design. Uh, if you look at APIs, what are they? Uh, they are what I call force multipliers. It allows us to take our platform and then very quickly extend its capabilities almost exponentially. And you saw examples of that in the morning when we showed how our platform integrates with technologies from Palo Alto Networks, Arista, uh, F5. Uh, not only that, if you look at our API first design, it lets us integrate other technologies. We had some acquisitions, Pernix Data, Kamayo. It very quickly lets us bring those technologies into our platform. But those are more traditional routine ways sure. of extending a platform. Uh, and I promised earlier on, uh, Jason has some you know, more creative ways by which we can extend the enterprise cloud platform. Yeah, we're gonna take some risks in uh, this session, so <laughs> light the demo prayer candle that it goes well. Um, so the first four years I was at Nutanix, I was on the US federal team, uh, serving US government agencies and having conversations around Nutanix, but the bigger part of the conversation was around innovation and a competitive advantage. How can you use innovation and technology to have an advantage against your adversaries, to have an advantage in support of the warfighter, in support of humanitarian aid, disaster relief. Um, so a lot of the first four years were, were structured around that. And uh, our president, Sadish, has, he's got a, a saying he's been using a lot lately in, in Slack, widen the lens, yeah. right? I'm sure you've yeah. seen it and he's, yeah. you know, he's uh, indoctrinating us with a widen the lens. And when I think about that and I think about what we've been talking at or talking about at .next for the last couple of years, it's Nutanix, it's Prism, it's use the API. But if you step back and widen the lens, you realize that there are a lot of other platforms, a lot of other data that we can tap into to make our interaction with the data center that much more intelligent. Yeah, yeah so how about we roll the video and we see you know, how such extension can actually take place. Hey Siri, is it supposed to storm tomorrow? Yes, in fact there will be thunderstorms tomorrow. Hey Siri. Beep. Send a text to Nutanix cluster. What do you want to say to Nutanix cluster? Please cloud back up my VM. Ready to send it? Yes. Okay, I'll send it. Alexa, play some music. Alexa, ditch the V-tags. Kind of a, a fun video there. Yeah. So if we learned one thing in that video, it's uh, that even Siri doesn't know how to uh, pronounce Nutanix, right? Uh, I guess <laughs> tricky, uh, tricky company name. Um, there were two big concepts in that video that again, if you kind of watch it at a macro level, hopefully you take away. One of them is context, right? And for those that didn't go out drinking too hard last night, 
and attended the, the keynote this morning. You, you heard Deeridge talk about Internet of Things, about all of these devices. And if you take a minute to think about everything in your daily life, you know, whether it's when you're traveling, when you're at home, when you're in your car, you realize there's a lot of devices that are connected, that are receiving data, retransmitting data. And these companies now are opening up the ability to tap into their data via API calls, right? Yeah. Um, and if we go back to widening the lens, we think about how can we do creative things with these other data sources to make the way we interact with the data center smarter, right? So one of the examples was Zach, the system administrator, is walking out of the office and through beacon technology or geolocation, he gets a text that the cluster's healthy, right? That's a pretty, pretty easy thing to do. Uh, we see him ask Siri, hey, is it supposed to storm tomorrow? Uh, I live in the Washington, D.C. area, and when there is snow in the forecast, not snow falling from the sky, but just snow in the forecast, everybody decides to stay home. You know, they rush to the grocery store, maybe they get milk and eggs and toilet paper, and then they, you know, they, they hunker down. Um, so he's asking, hey, is it going to storm tomorrow? Um, the data center could take some action based on that. In the Washington, D.C. area, people decide to work from home. They telework. So the data center could spin up virtual machines, virtual desktops, in preparation of that. And really, context is available now. This is not smoke and mirrors, forward stuff that, oh, this is coming fall of 2018. This is stuff to think about 2019. You guys, if you have the time available, can tap into this stuff now. You can be more creative with the way you interact with the data center uh, and, and also do it in a more intelligent way. Yeah. And it's not just richer, ubiquitous concept, right? Uh, the other thing that you're seeing is the sort of a emergence of another big trend, which is an evolution to natural interfaces. For the last 30, 40 years, the way we have interacted with systems, it's largely around, you know, you either, you know, there used to be punch cards and they say keyboard, you were clicking mice, and increasingly you were seeing a trend towards, you know, my, my daughter, before she could actually verbalize words properly, she's swiping screens on the iPad. We all, when we are going into our cars, I mean, we are using voice for a lot of things that routinely we would use something else before. And if you look at things like fingerprint readers uh, for authentication, and the day is not that far off where using technologies such as augmented reality, you could be actually feeling systems in the virtual world, interacting with them, and real change would happen in the physical world. So you can see the, 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 the mixture of these two trends, and you know, these are powerful things that we can leverage within the enterprise cloud platform. Very good. So uh, I think most of Nutanix employees that are, that are here at .next know this. Raja, you probably know this as well. During kind of the course of the year, the vast majority of the virtual machines we use, virtual infrastructure we use at Nutanix runs out of a US-based data center. Uh, last night, after I stopped drinking, before I went to bed, I decided to do an en masse migration of the VMs that were in the US data center to a data center here uh, in Europe. Roger, any guesses as to why I did that before I went to bed? Oh, I think maybe, you know, since we are having uh, this event in Vienna and there's a lot of, you know, we want the user experience to be snappy, so maybe for latency reasons we move the VMs to the EMEA data center? It's a very good technical guess. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the right answer. And, you know, any other guesses as to why we decided to en masse migrate to Europe yesterday? <laughs> a couple of good guesses. I heard cost. I heard uh, a couple of ones I won't repeat. Uh, cost also not, is not uh, a... <laughs> The, the correct answer. So we talk context. All right, we talk context, whether it's weather, whether it's uh, economic data. Context could also be what? Could also be political. All right, so you know, I went to bed last night. I, I uh, voted early before I came here to, to Austria. Went to bed. I had no idea who was going to win. You know, maybe I thought it was, who was going to win. Maybe they won, maybe they didn't. But there was uncertainty. So to mitigate the uncertainty, I decided to en masse migrate to Europe last night. Yeah, and, and you know, we can see an example of like there was uncertainty and now that things are known at least somewhat, uh, we get back to kind of like a known consistent state and we could send the VMs back home. I think so, yeah. I mean the uncertainty is gone. I mean maybe we could confirm, and this is where we uh, say our little demo prayer, uh, Alexa, who won the U.S. presidential election? Donald Trump won the election. According to current AP projections, Donald Trump won 276 electoral votes from 27 states. 
Hillary Clinton won 218 electoral votes from 19 states. The popular vote count is close, with both candidates currently having 48 percent. Very yes. thorough. Always good to, you know, trust but verify, right? Yeah. Right. So the, the uncertainty is gone. Um, you know, maybe before the wall gets built, maybe we could uh, send the VMs back. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. But I was thinking instead of just, again, doing it the old-fashioned way where we go to prism and punch something, maybe let's do it in, you know, some fun way. Uh, we can try. Okay. Uh, if we could cut over to the laptop and send some good vibes, we'll see if it works. So what we're seeing here, fa fairly simple stuff, right? On the, the screen on the left is pointed, is prism pointed at the data center uh, here in Europe, it's running a handful of virtual machines and they're chugging along and they're happy. Prism on the right is the U.S. data center that currently is doing nothing. Um, so since we've decided it is safe, we can give this a whirl uh, and see if we can get it to come back. Alexa, tell the cluster to fail back. I will begin failing over the virtual machines that are running in the European data center back to the United States. So what we'll see kick off, right, I issued a voice command, it's actually talking to what it thinks is a, is a virtual light switch that's then calling uh, the code, right? So what we'll see happen is, you know, knock on wood, the VMs that are running in Europe will start to gracefully shut down, power off, snapshots will be created in the US, and the VMs will be powered on. Oh, okay, it's starting to kick off here. But you think about it, and there's a lot of different ways to use this, right? One is fun to interact, and you talked yeah. about evolution of the interface, right? Yeah, yeah, and you can see, like, you know, with Prism, already we have a pretty powerful search interface, but you can see the arc of technology there. Today, it is what I would call structured language search. Over time, you can see all these different technology pieces coming together, and the day is not far off where you can interact with even a system like Nutanix using natural language, uh, you know, with, with, you know, sitting somewhere in your car, right? So the possibilities are endless. Uh, I think over the next several months, several years, you will see us bring forth and extending the capabilities of the enterprise cloud platform. Very good. Uh, so I think it's, a, it's, it's late in the day. I don't know about you, Jason. I think I could use a drink. What I'm about already, you? I'm one ahead of you. All right, well, okay, uh, that's, that's a wrap. We'll see you guys at the cocktail reception. Thank you. Thank you.